Hello everyone, this video took longer than I wanted to come out because it wasn't my initial plan for a video. I wanted to do a randomizer nuzlocke and fire red, but between how luck based the run is by nature and how many failed attempts I had, I lost interest in doing it. It just wasn't fun anymore, so I decided to scrap it and move on to this one. As you can tell from the title of the video, I'm calling this an XP lock. But what does that mean? An XP lock is a Nuzlocke idea I had where if a Pokemon in my party gains experience, I can't remove it from my team until it dies. I did allow myself to box or release a Pokemon that had gained experience just to save myself some time. There really isn't a difference between boxing or releasing a Pokemon and battling like a moron against wild Pokemon in order to kill a team member. That's the only special rule of this run, but I'm going to go over the other rules that I have set. The standard rules of a Nuzlocke are in place here. If a Pokemon faints, it's dead. I can only catch the first Pokemon I encounter in an area, and if my whole team dies, I lose the run. I'm not using the nicknaming rule, though. The whole purpose of that rule is to get you more attached to your team members, but it doesn't make any difference for me. I don't normally nickname my Pokemon when I play these games, so requiring myself to do so doesn't accomplish anything other than to waste time. Now for the optional rules. Item use is not allowed in battle this run. Held items are, though. I have the dupes closet effect, which allows me to pass on a Pokemon I've already caught without losing my encounter for the area. In order to add to this challenge, I'm not allowed to overlevel the next gym leader, and I have the battle style on set. I ran the ROM through the randomizer in order to enable trade evolutions by level up. I'm writing the script for this video as I go, and that's about it for the rules, so let's get into the run. Now the first choice I need to make in this run is which starter I should pick. I'm sure most people would expect me to choose Mudkip, but I'm not doing that. I've done a solo Pokemon run of Emerald with all three of the starters before. I wanted to know which of the starters was the best for the game, and my results were that Sceptile is the best, Swampert was a close second, and Blaziken is pretty trash. You might have a different opinion or different results if you've done the same thing, but that makes sense considering how we likely played it in a different manner. Plus, Sceptile's my favorite Hoenn starter, so that's who I took. The first battle against May was closer than I would have liked. I'm pretty sure the only reason I won that battle was because I got a crit on one of my pounds and May didn't get any crits. Now that I have Pokeballs, it was time to start catching Pokemon. Emerald is a bit of a unique game for Nuzlocke because you don't get your starter in the starting town. You get it on Route 101, which means that I don't get to catch a Pokemon on that route as I already have a team member from that route. On Route 103, I caught a Poochyena. I've used Mightyena in a casual Emerald run before, and it sucked due to the physical special split not existing yet. I don't foresee myself using this Pokemon on my team, so for the moment I'm not going to give it any experience. If I don't give it any experience, I can box it without permanently losing it as an option for the team. On Route 102, I caught a Wormble. This might be a decent encounter. If it becomes a Beautifly, I could maybe get some use out of it. If not, Dustox will probably die to Roxanne, so I don't see much of a downside to leveling it up. On Route 104, I found a Wingle. I've never used one of these, but its water flying typing could be useful, although it'll probably get decimated by Watson. I'm not sure if I want to lock it onto my team right now, so I'm not leveling it yet. Trico should have no trouble soloing Roxanne, so I don't think it'll be that detrimental. In Petalburg Woods, I caught a Slack off. I don't particularly want a Pokemon with Truant, so I chose not to give it any experience, at least for now. While I was in the forest, Wormball evolved into Silcoon. This is great, as I would much rather have a Beautifly than a Dustox, so I'm happy that this is how it turned out. I need to be careful using against Roxanne due to Beautifly's double weakness to Rock, but it shouldn't have any trouble with her Geodudes. On Route 116, I caught a Talo, which almost killed Trico in the process. This is a good encounter that will be very useful against the Fighting Gym. I grabbed a Whismur in a nearby cave. I don't want to use this Pokemon as it sucks, but I can use it as a sacrifice in order to gain a free switch into a more useful Pokemon. These are all the Pokemon that I can catch before the gym. I trained my team up to level 15 since that's the highest level Roxanne has. 
Against Roxanne, I led with Beautifly. Right out of the gate, I misclicked and used Gust against her first GD. Unsurprisingly, it did next to nothing and Beautifly almost died to a Rock Tomb. I fired back with Absorb, which was enough to one-shot both of her G-dudes. When Nose Pass came out, I swapped out to Whismur so it could get whatever damage it could in before dying. Once it was killed, I brought Trico in. What ensued was very annoying. I only used Absorb, but Roxanne wasn't willing to admit defeat and started spamming out healing items. It didn't matter though, as Absorb was healing Trico with every use, and after an irritatingly long battle, Nose Pass went down and I earned the badge without any unintended deaths. Upon reaching Dooford Town, I grabbed the old rod and headed for the far right side of the town. When you get to that side of town, you enter Route 107. Route 107 and Dooford Town have the same list of Pokemon that can spawn when using the old rod. On Route 107, I caught a Magikarp, and in Dooford, I caught a Tentacool. Tentacool is the one that I wanted. I moved into Grand Cave and caught a Makahita. I would have preferred an Aaron, but I won't object to a fighting type. Fun fact, fighting is one of my favorite types. When I do casual runs of Pokemon games, I try to have my top 6 favorite types on my team. Those types, in order from favorite to least favorite, are Grass, Electric, Ice, Fighting, Psychic, and Steel. With that tangent over, I leveled my team to 19 before taking on Brawly. Brawly led with Machop, and I used my Grovile. I used Bullet Seed because, unfortunately, it's the best grass move I have access to at the moment. It took out slightly less than half of Machop's health, but it's only because one of the two hits was a crit. Yes. Only two hits. I have abysmal luck whenever I play Pokemon games. It's why I don't like using moves with less than 90 accuracy, and why I hate moves that hit two to five times. I almost always miss or only hit twice with these moves. Machop used bulk up, and my next bullet seed hit three times, but it left Machop with a sliver of health. It then karate chops Grovile, and of course it was a crit, leaving Grovile with only 12 health. I know that Karate Chop is a high crit chance move, but I hardly ever get crits with those types of moves, whereas the AI gets them about 80% of the time. I go for a quick attack to finish off Machop, but Brawly used the Super Potion. Between Machop's defense boost and Grovile's poor attack stat, quick attack barely did anything. I swapped Grovile for Beautifly in order to double resist Brawly's fighting moves. Her entrance to the fight was met with a Karate Chop that dealt 3 damage. I used Sunspore to try to take away turns from Brawly and it immediately paid off. I used Gust to bring Machop down to about a third health. Unfortunately, Brawly used Seismic Toss in order to negate my double fighting resistance. But I had enough health to tank it. The next Gust finished Machop off. Metatite came out next, but it was a one-shot with Gust. Makahita's out last, and Gust takes it down to a third health. Brawly called for bulk up and then Makahita ate at Citrus Berry. The next Gust doesn't finish Makahita due to the defense boost, and Makahita's Vital Throw only did 6 damage. I finished the battle with one last Gust. I probably should have just led with Beautifly, since she absolutely destroyed Brawly. Oh well, the second badge was mine, and I still haven't lost any important Pokemon. I make my way to Slateport and get past it as fast as I could. On Route 110, I caught an Electric. I put it in the box, though. I don't need an Electric type right now, and by the time I do, I'll be able to catch a Magnemite in New Mothal. I proceeded to battle as many trainers as I could. The only thing of note between Brawly and Watson is the next rival battle. This battle is notorious for its difficulty. It's the only rival battle in this game that actually poses a problem. I did do the optional rival battle in Rustboro, but I didn't even think to record it, due to how much of a pushover May generally is. That's not the case for this battle though, so let's get into it. May sends out her Wingle first, and I chose my Swellow. Before Wingle can even get an attack off, it's obliterated by a wing attack. Combuskin is out next, and it just barely survives a wing attack. May then utilizes the Galaxy Brain strat of using Focus Energy, and gets taken out by Swellow's quick attack on the next turn. Last up is Lombre, who is also unable to survive a wing attack. Yeah, that was easier than I expected. Apparently, May just can't handle a Swellow. 
Who knew? Wally blocks the path to the Marvel Assembly gym, so I obliterate him and get my team up to level 24 before taking on Watson. Watson leads with his Voltorb, who's met by my Grobile. My first Bullet Seed trades with the Voltorb Spark, the second one is met by Shockwave, and the third Bullet Seed takes down Watson's first Pokemon. The gym leader then chooses his Electric to battle my Grobile. Two Bullet Seeds take it out, but not before it hits a Leer and a Quick Attack. When Magneton comes out, I switch to Hariyama. Hariyama gets paralyzed upon entry, but it proves to be a wasted turn on Watson's part. I used Fake Out for some free damage. Next turn, I called for Vital Throw and was hit by a weak Sonic Boom before crushing the Magneton, who should be a Magnemite at its current level. Up last is Manectric, who howls before going down to a single Vital Throw. This battle, despite being easy, upset me. In casual runs, I tend to struggle with Watson, mostly because of his illegal Magneton. I don't like Hariyama all that much, and the fact that it destroys Watson is annoying. Since it's the only Pokemon other than a Marshtomp and a Kabuskin that could deal super effective damage to it at this point in the game. Oh well, time to move on. There's quite a bit of story stuff in between here and the next gym in Lava Ridge Town, but none of it, including the Maxi fight, is very interesting, so I didn't record it. My next level cap was level 29. I had to be very careful in order to avoid overleveling. I used Repels the whole way to Lava Ridge, so I still have all of my encounters available on the routes leading there. After leveling my whole team to 29, I go for my next encounters, since I kinda completely forgot that I should be getting those. On Route 112, I caught a Numel. That's not great, but I guess it's a fire type in case I need one. I don't usually feel the need to have a fire type though, so it'll probably stay in the box. In the Fiery Path, I caught him a Chop, which is awesome. Machamp is easily my favorite Gen 1 fighting Pokemon. I'm starting to hope that Hariyama will die. I'm not going to intentionally kill it though, since it is a good Pokemon. On Route 113, I caught a Spinda. Woo. I can't wait to throw it into the box and never use it. On Route 114, I luck into fighting a Swablu. Altaria could be a very good Pokemon to have on my team. In Meteor Falls, I found a Solrock. It isn't as good of an encounter as you might think though, since Solrock is a physical attacker and doesn't get very many good moves. This thing was also very annoying to catch. I had to swap out twice in order to avoid dying. I chose not to catch anything in Jagged Pass since the only thing there that I don't have is Spoink, and I do not want a Spoink, so it's time for Flannery. The beginning of this battle isn't very interesting. Her first three Pokemon get one shot by Tentacle's Bubble Beam. This is a double-edged sword though, since it leaves her with all of her healing items. Out next is Torkoal. I use Bubble Beam, which deals about a third of its health. Torkoal retaliates with a Body Slam, taking out slightly less than half of Tentacle's health. I used another Bubble Beam, hoping for a crit and fall just short of the kill. The return Body Slam takes my Pokemon down to 6 health, and paralyzes. I use another Bubble Beam knowing that a heal was coming. Again, it takes out a third of Torkoal's health. I still want Tentacools, so I swap out to Beautifly in order to try paralyzing it. Unfortunately, Beautifly gets hit by Body Slam that paralyzed it. I don't need Beautifly anymore, so I just let it get killed. I sent out Hariyama in order to get some free damage with Fake Out. I used Vital Throw afterward, hoping it would deal enough damage to kill, but Flannery used Attract. Hariyama broke through the infatuation, but Vital Throw didn't kill. I swapped out to Swellow in order to remove the detraction, since I knew she was going to heal again. I go for the Hail Mary double teams, but she never missed and Swellow died. Hariyama is back out. After using Fake Out, I used Vital Throw. Before the throw could connect, Body Slam just happened to paralyze my Pokemon. This is absurdly bad luck, much worse than my usual brand of bad luck. Thankfully though, the universe realized how poor my luck was and Vital Throw crit for the kill. Flannery was finally done. I lost two Pokemon to her because she refused to admit defeat and just spammed out healing items. This is why I stopped using items even in casual runs. It isn't satisfying to win a battle just because you have a bigger wallet than your opponent. I grabbed Solrock, Machop, and Swablu out of my box after the battle. 
I entered the sandstorm area on Route 111, and my encounter there was a tray pinch. I immediately replaced Sorok, since I would rather have a Flygon, and start training my team up to level 31, the level of Norman's strongest Pokémon. Time for the gym, but considering how I have two strong fighting Pokémon on my team, I'm not that worried. Norman leads with his Spinda, and I send out Hariyama. Fake Out deals about a fourth of Spinda's health, and I finished it off with an Arm Thrust. Vigoroth came out and hit Hariyama with a weak facade before going down to a single Vital Throw. The exact same scenario with the leader's Lanoon happens, the only difference is that Hariyama's hit by a headbutt instead of a facade. Last up is Norma's ace, slacking. Expecting a counter, I use Fake Out knowing that it wouldn't do anything. I was right, and the next turn I used Vital Throw to take it down to a third health, before it ate at Citrus Berry. After another round of Fake Out and counter being completely useless, I finished off slacking with another Vital Throw. I honestly don't understand why anyone considers this to be the hardest gym in the game. I have never lost to Norman, even when I didn't use any fighting moves. His first three Pokemon are pretty weak and can usually be taken out in one hit. Slacking is easy to deal with as it usually uses counter, which is countered by either not attacking or using a special attack like Leaf Blade. My first single Pokemon challenge I ever did was a Cubone run of Emerald, and Norman still wasn't a problem. Okay, my rant is done. After Norman is Winona, whose strongest Pokemon is level 33, only two levels higher than I'm at right now. I'm going to have to be very careful to avoid overleveling. Any Pokemon who reaches level 34 can't be used in the Winona battle. They won't be dead, but they'll be a dead slot in my party until she's defeated. I could choose to kill one off in order to get an electric Pokemon on my team. I'll have to see what happens. I surfed to Slateport, skipping any trainers I could. I picked up the TM for Ice Beam along the way. Upon returning to Mauville, Watson asked me to turn off the new Mauville generator. When I'm there, I caught a Magnemite, but since my party's full, I can't use it yet. I picked up the Thunderbolt TM before leaving. On Route 119, I caught a Tropius. Tropius is a cool Pokemon, but it isn't very good. It does make a great HM Pokemon, though, as it can learn Fly, Strength, Rock Smash, and Flash. It's an ideal choice for a Victory Road HM user. After finishing at the Weather Institute, I have another battle with May. Her Pelipper is sent out against my Tentacruel. I immediately swapped out to Grovile because Tentacruel was already level 33 and I forgot to change my party order. The Pelican spammed Protect for a few turns before going down to a couple Leaf Blades. Combuskin came out next, and I swapped out for Tray Pinch. Unfortunately, Tray Pinch was hit by a Sand Attack upon entry. Combuskin used Bulk Up when I went for Dig. May chose to swap out for her Lombre, and then Dig missed. I hate accuracy dropping moves. One accuracy drop usually means that I miss about 80% of my attacks. I swapped out for Swablu. Peck did less damage than I thought it would. Lombre kept using Nature Power, which turned into Swift. Swablu got down to 30 health, and I was pretty sure that it could survive a crit. Lombre decided to test that theory by landing a crit, bringing Swablu down to 6 health. One more peck finished it off. Combuskin came back out, and I swapped out for Tentacruel in order to one-shot it with Surf. With my whole team at level 33, it's time to battle Winona. I'm actually pretty concerned about this battle due to my team's lack of firepower. I have Ice Beam on Tentacruel, and that's about it. Trey Pinch and Swablu haven't evolved yet, so I can't count on them very much. Three of my Pokemon are also weak to flying. Against Winona Swablu, I sent out Tentacruel. Ice Beam fails to take out the Cloud Bird, which does not bode well for this battle. Swablu hits a weak Aerial Ace before getting healed by Winona. Since I outspeed, though... Two Surfs takes it down. I was happy to see Altaria come out next, but despite the double ice weakness, Tentacruel fails to take it down. I got even more nervous when Altaria used Dragon Dance. The Orenberry Winona's ace held brought Altaria out of healing range, and I surprisingly still outsped and finished off the dragon. Skarmory is out next, and even a critical Surf isn't enough to one-shot it. Aerial Ace hits for surprisingly small damage before one last Surf drowns the Metal Bird. Tropius comes out and gets one shot by an Ice Beam. Last up is Pelipper, who proves to be very annoying, but not much of a threat. 
I used acid, but anyone who has this stupid pelican loves to spam protect as though it would actually make some kind of a difference. The next acid hits for pitifully low damage before supersonic confuses Tentacruel. I swapped out to Grovile expecting another protect, but his entry to battle is met with an aerial ace instead, taking him down to half health. I'm not sure who to bring in, so I send out Hariyama to get a fake out in. He gets hit for very little damage off an aerial ace, considering his weakness to flying. Pelipper then protects against fake out. I used smelling salt, and despite getting a crit, it failed to kill the dumb bird. Hariyama got confused, so on the turn when only heals, I swapped out to Swablu. I go for Sing to try putting it to sleep. It fails, of course. My opponents rarely miss 55 accuracy moves, whereas I rarely hit them. Another aerial ace connects for 22 damage. The next Sing works, and I swapped out to Hariyama. Fake Out deals about a fifth of Pelipper's health. Unfortunately, Winona's last Pokemon wakes up and uses Protect in order to prevent Smelling Salts from connecting. The next one hits bring my opponent down to half health before another Supersonic lands. Supersonic is 55 accuracy and Pelipper has yet to miss with it. I swap out to Machoke because I'm not dealing with confusion. Pelipper finally missed a Supersonic when Machoke hit with Seismic Toss, taking the bird down to a sliver. Rather than risking an Aerial Ace crit, I swap back to Hariyama to finish the battle with Fake Out. It's finally over. This battle took 4 minutes and 20 seconds, and most of that time was spent fighting Pelipper. I hate this stupid bird. There is quite a bit between the 6th and 7th gym. Thankfully, the level cap for the double battle gym is level 42. Before I get to that point, though, I need to battle the bad guy teams a bit, but I'll get some encounters along the way. I don't get an encounter on Route 120, because I'm an idiot and I killed the static Kecleon encounter. On Route 121, I caught a Shuppet. When I reach Lily Cove City, May is waiting for me. She wants to get destroyed again. This is the final rival battle, by the way, and she only has four Pokemon. Time to sweep her off to the side. May sends out her Tropius, who is met by my Tentacruel. One Ice Beam does the job. For some reason, she thought that Combuskin would be a good counter to a water type. Yeah, as I said, this is the final rival battle, and her starter isn't even fully evolved. One Surf takes it out. Pelipper is out next. Thankfully, this one isn't as annoying as Winona's was. As usual, May spams Protect. That's actually the only move it uses, so after a few Ice Beams, I finish it off with an Acid. Ludicolo is up last. I used Acid in order to bring it down to half health. It fires off a nature power that turned into Swift. Then I finished it with one more Acid. It's kind of pathetic how weak your rival is in this game. The whole point of a rival in these games is to challenge the player. In Emerald, the rival is nothing more than a minor inconvenience. I did some fishing in Lily Cove and caught a Whalemer. I went to Section 4 of the Safari Zone hoping for the 5% Heracross encounter. Instead, I caught an Oddish. I'm okay with that. Vileplume is my favorite Gen 1 Grass Pokemon, and Blossom comes close to being my favorite Gen 2 Grass Pokemon, just barely losing to Meganium. On Mount Pyre, I'm able to guarantee myself a Vulpix due to the Dupes Clause and my luck in finding a Shuppet earlier. Time for Maxi. He sent out his Mighty Anna against my Tentacruel. Surf tears a massive chunk of health away from the Hyena before I get hit by Swagger. I refuse to deal with confusion, so I swap out to Hariyama. Maxi heals his Pokemon, and after Fake Out, Hariyama wins with an Arm Thrust. Crobat is out next. I decided to use Strength because I thought I could take a flying attack. I was right, but a crit would have killed. Due to my low level, though, Strength doesn't do much. I swapped out to Altaria, who takes two Air Cutters before hitting with a Dragon Breath, taking Crobat down to a third health. I don't want to risk Altaria dying, so I swap out to Tentacruel. Maxi healed, and Tentacruel actually outsped to hit an Ice Beam. Crobat survived on the sliver of health and used Confuse Ray. I swapped out to Trade Pinch in order to get rid of the confusion and bring Tentacruel back out. I finished off the Crobat, and Maxi's camera up unsurprisingly goes down to one Surf. I really need to level my team more before going to the Aqua Hideout. I destroyed the Aqua Base and moved on to Moss Deep City. I caught a Spiel in Shoal Cave and finished training for the infamous Double Battle Gym. With my whole team at the level cap of 42, I challenged Tate and Liza. 
I send out Sceptile and Tentacruel to attempt a clean sweep, but Zatu and Claydol didn't feel like cooperating. Leafblade only takes out about half of Claydol's health, and Surf comes just shy of finishing off. It crits Zatu for half health, though. Zatu sets up a Calm Mind, and Claydol's Earthquake dealt half of Tentacruel's health while barely damaging Sceptile. Claydol gets healed before getting knocked back down to half health by another Leafblade. Tentacruel's Ice Beam comes just shy of taking out Zatu. Zatu then fired off, a Calm Mind boosted Psychic, which finished off Tentacruel. That's fine, I do have a Sveal to take his place, and the partial Ice Typing will make my Ice Beams better. After a short debate on who to send in, I settled on Altaria. Zatu gets healed at the start of the next turn. Sceptile finished off Claydol with one last Leaf Blade while I set up a Dragon Dance with Altaria. I tried putting Zatu to sleep with Altaria Sing, but it failed. Sceptile managed to one-shot Soul Rock with a critical Leaf Blade, and Zatu set up a now useless Sunny Day. The next Sing puts Zatu to sleep, and Lunatone gets knocked down to red health by a Leaf Blade. Lunatone set up a Calm Mind, but it failed to save it from a Leaf Blade as Altaria flies into the air. The combination of Altaria's Fly and Sceptile's Pursuit takes Zatu down to one-fourth health while it was sleeping. Pursuit drops Zatu into red health, waking it up. Zatu missed its Psychic because Altaria flew into the air again. Tain lies a heal again before Zatu gets brought down to a fourth health again. A combination of Pursuit and Dragon Breath finished off the gym. I thought this battle would be easier because of Tentacruel, but it still wasn't that bad. Time to save the world and train up my spiel. My next level cap is only 46, so once again, I need to be careful. I do have to battle with Archie before I can save the world. I lead with my Celio because I'm still trying to train it up. Archie's Mighty Anna hits me with a swagger, but Celio broke through the confusion to hit a Surf for most of Mighty Anna's health. I swap out to Sceptile in order to get rid of the confusion, and Archie uses a Super Potion. Sceptile easily outspeeds and finishes it off with a Leaf Blade. Crobat is out next, and I swap back to Celio. Celio gets hit by an Air Cutter, followed by a Confuse Ray, and unfortunately Celio hits himself in confusion, but the next turn he finished Crobat with an Ice Beam. Last up is Sharpedo, so I brought back Sceptile in order to finish it with a Leaf Blade. Now the world is ending, so I have to go to the Sky Pillar to have Rayquaza tell Groudon and Kyogre to knock it off. Now that that's over, I can get back to what actually matters. I get my team up to level 46 and proceed to Challenge 1. I don't know why, but Juan has a love disc, and he sent it out first. Unsurprisingly, it goes down to one Leaf Blade from Sceptile. Juan's next choice is Celio, who barely survives a Leaf Blade and strikes back with an Aurora Beam. Leaf Blade fails again to knock out the Celio after it heals. Sceptile finished it off with a Giga Drain, hoping Juan would heal again, which she unfortunately didn't. Juan has had enough of Sceptile at this point, and he sends out Kingdra. Leaf Blade only deals a third of its health, and it sets up a double team. I swapped out to Hariyama because the Vital Throw can't miss. Upon switching in, though, Hariyama is hit by an Ice Beam that both crits and freezes. Yep, that's my usual brand of luck. I swapped out to Machamp instead. Machamp gets hit by an Ice Beam and a Water Pulse before landing a Vital Throw. Kingdra used Rest to heal and woke up with his Chesto Berry. Vital Throw takes out a solid third of the Dragon's health. Machamp gets hit by another Ice Beam before critting a Vital Throw to finish off Kingdra. Wish Cash comes out, and I swap back to Sceptile. I used Giga Drain to one-shot it and fully heal my starter. Outlast is Wants Crawdont, who goes down to a single Leaf Blade. With that battle done, all that's left is the Elite Four. Now, the way I'm doing this with the level cap is that I can't overlevel the champion. Wallace's highest level Pokemon is at level 58, so that's what my level cap is. Before I head over there, though, I decide to box Hariyama, killing him in the process, according to my rules. I grab Magnemite out of my box because Wallace has a Gyarados, and I think it'll be good to have a strong electric Pokemon on my team. Inside Victory Road, I'm ambushed by Wally, who apparently didn't learn his lesson last time and wants to battle. I sent out Magneton, as it's still in training. Wally's first choice is Altaria. I take it down in two Thunderbolts taking a weak Dragon Breath in the process. Delcaddy comes out and goes down to a single Thunder. While his Magneton is out next, and I miss my Thunder. Magneton gets hit by a Thunderbolt for about 30 damage. My next Thunder hits, but failed to finish it off. Another Thunderbolt brings my Pokemon to red health. One Thunderbolt is enough to finish off Wally's third Pokemon. 
The next opponent is Rosalia. I swap for my Altaria to keep my Magneton from further harm. The XP share will keep giving experience to it while my dragon battles. One use of Fly takes out Wally's Grass Pokemon. Last up is Gardevoir, but I made the mistake of using a Dragon Dance. Wally set up a Future Sight and my Hyper Beam missed. Gardevoir then starts using Double Team and I miss again. I miss another Hyper Beam because one use of Double Team obviously drops my chances to hit by about 80%. Gardevoir hits with Psychic, and then Future Sight bring my dragon to low health. I swapped out for Flygon in order to protect Altaria. Gardevoir takes the opportunity to set up another Future Sight. I hit with Crunch for disappointingly small damage. Another double team is used, but it doesn't save Gardevoir from being taken out by an Earthquake. With that battle over, I finish training for the Elite Four. Before the Elite Four, I check my Pokemon stats. If you notice in the bottom left corner, my Pokemon got Pokerus. Pokerus causes a Pokemon to gain double effort values and it spreads to all of your party Pokemon. It's just a shame that I didn't get it before the final grind when my team's effort values were already maxed out. Oh well, let's look at my Pokemon's moves. Machamp was holding a Citrus Berry and had Brick Break, Cross Chop, Hyper Beam, and Bulk Up. Sceptile was holding a Miracle Seed and had Leaf Blade, Giga Drain, Dragon Claw, and Agility. Magneton has Citrus Berry and had Thunderbolt, Thunder, Thunder Wave, and Protect. Walrein was holding a Chesto Berry and had Ice Beam, Surf, Blizzard, and Rest. Flygon was holding Soft Sand and had Earthquake, Fly, Flamethrower, and Crunch. Altaria had a Citrus Berry and had Fly, Hyper Beam, Parish Song, and Dragon Dance. With that done, it's time to start the Elite Four. First up is Sydney, who sends out Mighty Anna against my Machamp. I used Bulk Up twice to get the plus 1 attack, because Intimidate cancelled out the attack boost from the first one, and plus 2 defense. From there, it was an easy one-shot sweep with Brick Break. Brick Break is only 75 power, but it's the most reliable move I have access to due to its 100% accuracy. Sydney has never given me problems in this game, so time to move on. The second Elite Four member is the Ghost Trainer Phoebe. I send out Altaria hoping to do a Dragon Dance sweep, but after the second dance, Dusclop used Curse. Curse is a death sentence, so I swapped out to Flygon. I used Flamethrower knowing that Phoebe would use Protect. Then I finished it off with Crunch. The second Dusclop came out and I used Earthquake because it's a higher power move, Flygon has a higher physical attack than special attack, and it's boosted by same type attack bonus and Soft Sand. It survived and fired off an Ice Beam. I was terrified. I didn't know that it had Ice Beam, and Flygon has a double weakness to it. My dragon survived, though, and finished it off with another Earthquake. Phoebe's third Pokemon is Bayonet. I brought Walring out to protect Flygon. Phoebe just spammed Grudge for some reason, so it went down to a few Ice Beams after she healed it. The next Bayonet comes out and goes down to one critical Ice Beam. Last up is the Sableye that she, for some reason, has. It unsurprisingly goes down to one Surf. That's Phoebe done, so move on non to Glacia. I sent out Machamp against Hercelio. I went for two bulk ups because I knew she would use one turn to set up Hail, and I was pretty sure I could survive one hit from her. I was right, as for some reason she used Body Slam instead of any kind of special attacking move. The rest of the battle was a one-shot sweep using Brick Break. I was outsped by her Glalies, but only one attacked me. The other one set up Hail again because it had run out. At one point, the Hail barely knocked me into yellow health, triggering my Citrus Berry, but it really didn't make any difference considering how her Glalies were the only Pokemon she had that were faster than my Machamp. And yeah, Glacia was pretty easy, so on to Drake. I send out my Wall Rain against his Shellgon. Drake wastes a turn using Protect before his Ball dies to an Ice Beam. Drake immediately sends out his Ace, Salamence. Salamence hits with Rock Slide for laughably small damage for a super effective move. Walrein is a very tanky Pokemon. One Ice Beam easily deals with the Pokemon since it has a double weakness to ice. Fun fact, three of Drake's Pokemon have a double weakness to ice. Altaria comes out, crits a double edge, and goes down to an Ice Beam. Out comes Kingdra, who lands a critical body slam, but Walrein survived, took a nap, and immediately woke up because of its Chesto Berry. Having a tanky Pokemon with Rest hold a Chesto Berry is broken beyond all belief. It's great. Kingdra starts using Dragon Dance instead of attacking and goes down to two Ice Beams as a result. 
Flygon is last Pokemon. It hits a weak Earthquake before dying to an Ice Beam. And that's the Elite Four done. I only have one battle left. The Champion Battle with Wallace. Wallace starts with his Waylord, so I used Sceptile. Leaf Blade came just shy of killing, but Waylord set up a Rain Dance. I knew he would heal, so I swapped into my Magneton in order to take advantage of the Rain, because that makes Thunder 100 accuracy. Thunder obliterated Waylord, and for some reason Wallace sent out his Gyarados next. It died to one Thunderbolt. Wallace sent out his Whiskash, and since it's a ground type, I can't use Magneton. It was an easy switch to Sceptile to resist the Earthquake and one-shot it with Leaf Blade, though. Out next is Tentacruel. I switch into Wall Rain in order to prevent it from using an Ice Attack when I swap into Flygon, if it even has an Ice Attack. Wall Rain is hit by Toxic, but since I only brought it in as a pivot, it didn't matter. Flygon comes out, takes a resisted Sludge Bomb, and then one-shots Tentacruel with an Earthquake. Last up is Ludicolo. This Pokemon was annoying, but it didn't really need to be. I used Fly since it's a super effective move, but I immediately regret it when Ludicolo used Double Team. Good lord. I hate fighting Pokemon that use this move. Fly hits, but it only deals enough damage to take Ludicolo to half health. It then uses Leech Seed. What an annoying strategy. I swapped into Sceptile since it can't be Leech Seeded because it's a grass type, but Leaf Blade fails to finish it off as it goes for even more double teams. Wallace heals and I miss my Leaf Blade. The next one hits though, but even more double teams get used. This is officially more annoying than Winona's Pelipper. My next Leaf Blade hit, but it put Ludicolo back into full restore range. <sighs> I tried healing a bit using Giga Drain, but eventually, Sceptile's health got too low, and I decided to switch into Wall Rain to try for a Hail Mary freeze with Ice Beam. But even though I hit with an Ice Beam, it didn't freeze. The combination of Leech Seed and Toxic forced me to switch shortly after. I tried Magneton, but after I got hit with the Leech Seed, I remembered that Altaria has Perish Song. I swapped into Altaria like I should have to begin with, and I used Perish Song. Then I start swapping between Pokemon in order to stall out while Ludicolo's Parish counter goes down. And that's it. I became the champion without using items in battle and without overleveling. I didn't even lose any Pokemon during the Elite Four and Champion battles. I only lost five Pokemon in this run. I intentionally killed my Whismur in order to get a free switch against Roxanne. I lost Beautifly and Swellow to Flannery's Torkoal. I lost my Tentacruel to Tate and Liza's Zatu and I intentionally killed my Hariyama in order to bring Magneton onto the team. This was a fun playthrough. It was definitely more challenging than my Fire Red Nuzlocke. I'm thinking of doing a challenge run in Pokemon X where I'm not allowed to catch any Pokemon. That's it for this video though. Thank you for watching and have a good day.